I'm a dork. But I'm a dork who's good at painting. Let me walk you through how to paint this warbler. The first thing that I did is to paint the entire background a solid color. Now, if you don't have an airbrush, you can just paint it one solid dark color and you don't even have to worry about this step. Black would even work. Either way, get something painted in first, and then you're going to draw the subject onto the canvas. There are two ways that I like to go here. Either draw the subject onto a piece of tracing paper and use transfer paper to transfer that image cleanly onto the canvas, or draw it out with a white charcoal pencil. I prefer the tracing and transfer paper method just because look how nice and clean those lines are. I don't have eraser marks anywhere, so that makes my job much easier. The layering process is important with acrylics because they do dry so fast. I don't want to try to paint the background after the subject and try to blend it smoothly around it without messing up and getting some of the background paint blended over the bird. So that's why we want to paint that background first. Once that background is in, we can go ahead and start on the bird. And I am using a number one synthetic hog haired liner brush. You could also go with a Teclon bristled liner brush. Either way, we want something nice and small, but notice the bristles on that brush are really long. Brushes with very short bristles, while they look like they're smaller so they would get smaller detail, in reality, they don't work that great for acrylics. One, they don't last long. The acrylic paint is inevitably going to build up where the bristles meet the handle. And within a few uses, they're just going to fray like crazy. So you can't get that tiny detail with them. The other thing is, look how I can get these long, clean brush strokes with this brush. I'm able to load a decent amount of paint on it because the bristles are so long. If I was working with a brush with really short bristles, I'm going to have to do a whole lot of tiny, tiny little brush strokes instead of one nice, smooth, long stroke. So definitely get the liner brushes with the longer bristles. Avoid, when you're working with acrylics, avoid those tiny, short, bristled brushes. As I move over to the feathers, I've switched to a rake brush. I've got a link to all of these supplies in the video description. I've also got some videos that really break down how to use a rake brush because it can be a little bit of a challenge at first. But if you get used to using this brush, it can save so much time. And it doesn't take that long to get used to it. I don't want to scare you away from it. It may take a couple of hours of practice, but then you should be good to go. It's really just a matter of figuring out how much paint versus water to load onto the brush. One brush stroke gives you a whole bunch of little teeny lines. So that is how I'm building up these feathers. Now you may look at this and notice that the black paint looks really dull as it starts to dry. Really all of the colors do. That's because I'm working with a more matte type of paint. This is the Liquitex Basics, my absolute favorite acrylics to work with, not just because they're cheap, but they perform perfectly for my techniques. Anyway, the point is, if you notice that the paint looks like it dries different than it did wet, wait till the end of the video. I'm going to show you what a varnish will do to make this paint look just as good as an oil painting, just as good as it did when it was wet. It will bring that just vibrancy back, vibrancy, is that the right word? Back to the painting. So that is coming up. Notice how much of the background I'm leaving showing through in between each of these little clumps of feathers on this guy. That is important. You don't want just a solid mass. If you want it to look like feathers, leave the dark background showing through. And now it looks like you've got shadows without having to put in the effort of individually painting a bunch of shadows. Now with the rake brush and really with any brush, the harder you push, the thicker your lines are going to be. So here where I'm just getting those tiny little lines, those tiny little bits of fraying, I'm barely adding any pressure to that brush. Once that dries, I'm going to start glazing my yellows and oranges over these feathers. This is a very translucent color, and so I'm still going to see all of those shadows, those darker lines in between the feathers. So it just tints the color. I had to paint that white first though, because if I didn't, the oranges and yellows being so translucent, they wouldn't have shown up against the dark color at all. I often hear people complain thinking that their paints are not good because they're too translucent. No, just paint white first where you want it to be really bold, really bright, and then put these more translucent colors on top of it. Next, I can come back through with a lighter yellow. So I've mixed some white with my yellow and bring in some of those highlights with the liner brush. I'm mainly hitting the ends of the clumps of feathers. And this is important. This is going to not only bring out highlights, it helps to separate those previous lines you did with just the rake brush. Now that's the thing with the rake brush. If you do everything with that, 
the feathers or let's say you painted grass with it, it'll start to look too uniform. So once I get everything blocked in, I always come back through with a liner brush and just get a few more little details to break those little clumps and clusters of feathers or grass or whatever you're using with it to be more defined. Now I'm going to move on to the body. I'm using the rake brush again to start creating all of those little feathers on the body. Now obviously I'm not going to leave this straight white, but I'm going to make the base white and then glaze over it. It's a very fast process and a very easy way to get tons of tiny little detail. Another thing that I want to point out is that I'm working on a very smooth canvas. This is a Fredericks Belgian linen canvas. I also really like the Fredericks Blue Label canvas for getting that smooth finish. And just for transparency, Fredericks did provide me with this canvas for the video, but they were already the only canvas that I use. I've had a lot of problems with some of the generic crap that I've bought from local art supply stores. So Fredericks is it for me. But the point is they did provide this canvas for us. Now, the reason that I'm able to get that super smooth detail is because the canvas is so smooth. So let's say you have a canvas that's too rough. It's really bumpy. It's going to be very difficult to get these tiny smooth little lines, with, whether it be with the rake brush or a liner brush. So what do you do? do in that case. One of the things that you can do is put a few coats of gesso. I use Liquitex gesso. Let it dry between each coat and then lightly sand over it with a 220, 320, something like that sandpaper. I forget the numbers, but lightly sand over that and you can smooth that down to a very, very smooth finish. Just like with the head, once that is dry, I can go ahead and start glazing my color over it. Now, a huge tip, this is so important. If you're trying to make a light color, you may be tempted to add white. Do not add white. You will make it, titanium white is very opaque. You would make your previous details, you wouldn't see them anymore because you're putting an opaque color that you can't see through on top of it. You want the glaze just to be thinned down with water. You can use a glazing medium. I almost never do. I don't like the results I get with glazing mediums. Just thin it with water. And I know some of you are going to ask because you've all seen that video where the lady is telling you don't use water to thin your acrylic paints because underbinding, it's an absolute lie. That's not true. You can add anywhere between 90 and 95% water to your acrylic paints before it would cause any issue. Just thinning them with water is 100% fine. That was a complete myth that was spread by a lot of people and it's it's just not true. So use all the water you want. I doubt anyone's going to use 90 to 95%. At that point, you're even thinner than watercolor. Now I'm coming back through with my liner brush again and some white paint. I'm going to get some nice thin lines in here. If you struggle with getting thin lines with the, water, the liner brush, I do have a video showing you and breaking down how to do this, how to load the brush. I'll put a link to that in the video description. The key is to thin the, the paint with water. You can't just use thick, chunky paint in order to get that brush to flow smoothly. Notice there are no chunks of paint on the end of that brush. If you've got thick paint, you're just gonna make a glob. So thin that with water and I twist the brush into the mixture, the thin down paint, in order to get the perfect consistency to get these nice smooth lines. Now too much water can also be a problem. Too much and it starts to run, it doesn't, it's too translucent, doesn't really look right. So you've gotta do a little bit of experimentation there to get the perfect consistency of paint versus water to get these nice lines. We will be right back to this demonstration, but I do want to tell you about my longer lessons. If you're enjoying this and you would like to watch the over two hour long lesson, including downloadable steps so you can follow along easier, head over to patreon.com where for as little as $4 a month, you get instant access to over 300 lessons. I've been uploading lessons for you guys over there since 2015, so I have a huge collection instant access, tons of lessons for you to follow along with there. My next bit of advice on this one is don't think just because you have color on the canvas that that area is done. Look how this is just flat. We often get caught up on the idea of if I just knew what color to paint, that would look realistic. Mine would look realistic too. No, it's not about the color. It's about the values, how lighter your lights, how darker your darks. Watch what happens as I start adding shadows and highlights to this. It will suddenly go from flat cartoon looking to realistic. I've switched over to a smaller round brush and I'm adding some highlights right over these little berries. 
and look at the highlights and the dark. So whenever you're doing something like this, I recommend a minimum three different colors. I've got my highlight, I've got my mid color, which was my base layer, and I've got my shadows. More is always better, of course, but a minimum of three is going to give you a much more realistic look. The color isn't what made the difference there. It, were, it was my values. Light's light enough, dark's dark enough. As I start building the moss up on my tree trunk, this is very similar to how I painted the bird and that I'm starting just with white. I'm not gonna worry about color. I can glaze color over it. I've painted my dark base branch color, just gray and black. And now I'm dabbing and using various brushes here just to start creating the texture. Don't worry so much about the color here, just get that texture in. Now it may look a little overwhelming when you see the amount of detail the finished painting has, but really it's a very fast process. It's a layering process. You just need to understand that. So once I went through and created all that texture, I'm going to tone that down with a little bit of black. It's thinned down with water so that it is fairly translucent. And I'm just going to create a shadow over this moss before I go on to my next layer. Now I'm going to go over it with a round brush. This is a small round brush. A liner brush would work as well. Just like with the liner brush, the harder you push, the thicker your line is going to be. And I'm starting to create more defined texture here. So that initial mossy layer where I was just sort of sponging the brush and dapping the brush, I don't have a whole lot of control of what that comes out like. But now I can come through and start really defining these little clumps, the top sections of this moss. And this is going to give me a very realistic, very three-dimensional look. You can leave it where it's flat like it was, but it would be flat. Watch as I go through here how much more dimension this brings in. When that dries completely, I'm going to start glazing green over this. Now I do want some variation. I'm going to be switching from a more neutral green that is toned down a little bit by adding red to it. So little color tip for you. If you've got green and you're like, wow, that is, that's some green. That is just look at me green, but you don't want look at me green. You want just nice, soft, subtle green. These are technical terms, by the way. Just add a little bit of its complementary color, which is red. In this case, I had been using red oxide earlier on those berries. So I added a little bit of that to my green and it's going to tone it down some. Now, because we're glazing, don't add white. We don't want to get a pack pastel color that way. If you need it to look lighter, just thin it with more water so that more of the previous white layers we had done will show through. But to get that nice neutral green, add a little bit of red and that will tone it way down. Now we can move on to the mushrooms. I'm going to start by painting the inside white. Why? Because we want that to be yellow. I can't just paint yellow. It's too translucent. If I want that to really stand out, just go straight titanium white here. While that dries, I'm going to paint a bluish gray color for the caps of the mushrooms. And then some white dots on top of those. Now that the white paint is dry, I can go ahead and glaze. This is a combination of yellow and red to get that orange tone. And a bit more orange for the shading. Darken some of that up. I want the inside to look really bright, really glowy. So I'm gonna add a bit of white just in the center. Notice that I move around the stalk though, leave that showing. I'm gonna add a bit of black for the shading on the mushrooms. Now black is not always going to be your go-to shadow color on your paintings, but in this case, it works really well. Sometimes it's just too flat or the wrong color altogether. More often than not, I do a lot of my shadows with purples and magentas. But here, black definitely worked out well. And by making the top of the mushroom darker, that's going to make the inside of the mushroom look brighter. Sometimes if your light areas don't feel glowy enough, they're not bright enough, it's because what's next to it is not dark enough yet. I want these mushrooms to cast a nice warm glow on the branch below them. So I have mixed white and yellow to create the first layer because remember what I said before, just adding yellow by itself, yellow and orange, which is what I really want. If I had just painted that over the mossy branch, it wouldn't have been light enough. So I've got to get white mixed in there first. And when that white dries, I can now go ahead and glaze that warmer glow color over it. Again, no white is mixed in with the glaze. The white was done first because it was going to be opaque. Now I've just got a combination of red and yellow to get this really pretty orange tone. 
Now, I am going to airbrush my fireflies, but don't worry. If you don't have an airbrush, you can do this by dry brushing it. It's a really easy technique. I have a video showing you how to do that. I will put a link in the video description. I'm starting by painting them white first because if I just painted them the orange tone I really want, it's not going to show up. Orange is just too translucent or yellows. So white first, then I airbrushed yellow and then orange on top of that. And for those of you who are just dry brushing that, you're going to do the same thing. You'll dry brush. You'll just do little circles of the white and then dry it and then glaze your yellows and oranges just like we did with the mushrooms. Once your painting is dry, I usually wait overnight and you've gotten all the photos you need because once I put that high gloss varnish on it, it is not going to photograph well. I can go ahead and varnish and the varnish I'm using is high gloss from Liquitex. Look how it makes that painting look wet again. It brings all of those bright, vivid colors right back. You. I see all your unused art supplies over there. Oh my god, those brushes aren't even opened yet. Tragic. You keep buying new fancy materials, but you don't use them because you don't want to waste them. Stop making your art supplies sad. Sign up for art lessons for as little as $4 a month. There are over 300 painting and drawing lessons available when you sign up, and new ones every week. Patreon.com slash Lockree.